we want to look at some concepts relating to sets. Now, we want to look at, for example, the Venn diagram, the universal set, complement, subsets, intersection, disjoint sets, and union of a set. All right? Now, Venn diagram, the word Venn comes from John Venn, which was a, he was an English mathematician, logician, and philosopher, lived between the early 1800s to the early 1900s, I believe. All right? So that Venn, so you always write Venn using an uppercase V when you're talking about Venn diagrams. Now, generally, when it comes to Venn diagram, you represent Venn diagrams using a rectangle for the universal set. The universal set contains everything, including all the other sets. And then you use circles to represent all of those other sets. Right? So let's talk about the, the Venn diagrams a bit. Now, I don't want to take the chance of drawing my Venn diagrams by hand. So, let me use some diagrams here. Alright, so this is a rectangle that represents the universal set. Alright? The universal set in this case Sometimes you represent it with big U. But it could be, for example, students in a certain class. That's the universal set. And then, suppose you have a subset, a subset of the universal set. For example, those students who sign up to study music you use M to represent music, capital M for music, and then you have other students who sign up to study history. So we use H for history. Now, suppose it's the case that these students who are studying music, you don't have any of them studying history. There's no common um, connection between history and music in terms of these students. The register for those studying history and the register for those studying music has no name in common. Now, what that means is that these sets are not joined together. They have nothing in common. There's no element in one that is also in the other. So these sets are called disjoint sets. All right? So they are disjoint. So you see that? These sets are disjoint sets. Now, suppose, for example, you have certain students in studying music and some studying history. They have A, B, C in music, D, E, and F. Let me write my F a little further away from the edge. And F in history. What you're saying then is that you have A, B, and C in music, D, E, and F in history. Suppose you consider what this is saying 
um, union you consider what they call the union of a set it means music the union is represented by something looking like U like that and H equals now the union of two or more sets means elements that are in one set alone or elements that are in the other are both that mean everybody everything so in this case A is in the union because it's in music B is there C is there so is D E and F so A B C D E F those are in the union of the sets even though it is disjoint all right so that's the union over here let's look at what they call intersection m intersect h No, notice these elements they don't necessarily represent the names of the student you would write them in capital letters but when you write elements inside the set you by convention use lowercase letters so I'm just making them up A B C D E F now M intersect H is what now remember intersection means common to both they are in that intersection inter means between two now m intersect h would be represented by the null set it is a disjoint set there's nobody no element in both at the same time so it is a disjoint set okay So that's a union. No, no, that's the intersection. I mean, no. The thing is, what I want is this. You know what that means? M complement. The complement of M. Complement means outside. It's not in M. It's outside of M. So what is this set? Those that are outside M are D, E, and F. They are in H, but they're not in M. Alright? So that's M. Complement. They are outside of M. What about H complement? H complement would be A, B, C. They are not in H. Alright? It means outside. So that's a complement of H. Now, as I said before, the universe asset is a whole class. M and H are two subjects. And the elements would be those who are studying these subjects. Now, since in this class, those who are studying music are within the class, you have a set of students within that class studying music. M would be a subset of that class. Alright? So M would be a subset of that class. So would be H. H is a subset of the universal set. Alright. Now, let's make a little adjustment here. you now have within M 
those who are studying music those belong on a certain club let's say the key club K meaning key in this case you have these members that are within they are studying music but they also belong in the key club suppose A student A is in the key club and is studying music student B is not in the key club but also studying music all right student C is both studying music and in the key club let me use K for key so K key club now in this case what you have is that K would be a subset of M A C would be a subset of the set A B C because all the members in A C are also in A B C in other words K is a subset of M all the members in K are also in M all right M would be called a superset and K is the subset so you see that all right let's make one more adjustment to these things and talk about something just a little bit different now just a matter of making a, an adjustment here let me make M a little larger H a little larger as well and do this now suppose you have a situation like this you have A B C D E F G now D and G are in both sets at the same time D is studying music and history F what did I say? D and G? D and F, I should say. D and F are in both sets at the same time. D is studying music and history at the same time. F is studying music and history at the same time. All right? G is somewhere outside here. Now, you can say that M intersect H is what would it be it would be D and F you see that D and F so the intersection when you talk about an intersection right I'm talking about this area here This would be M intersect F, where they overlap, is the intersection. Now, suppose I want M union H. I won't have enough space over here to write this down. 
let me write it under here. I want M union H. What is that going to be? M union H. Remember union means those are that are in one set or the other set or both sets. So in this case, what I have is M union H are A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You see that? A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Those are in the union. M union H. Everybody. So remember, the union now would mean everything in both sets. All right? Now, suppose I want M union H complement. What would this be? First of all, those that are in M would be A, B. I need to rewrite some of these. I'd marked out some part of them. You have A, B. This was what? C, D, E, and F. M would be A, B, C, D, F. You see that? At the same time, H consists of D, E, F, D, E, F, G. Now, the union of them all, oh, H complement, this is H. All right, but this is not what I want. I want complement. So those that are outside of H, this is in H and this is in H. This is in H, this is in H. You see that? So these must not be included. So what I do here, seeing that these must not be included I consider what are the things that are outside of H those that are outside of H are A B C can't be D, D is in H E and G and F are in H don't forget about the J Alright, so the union between these two would be A, B, I have A, I have B, I have C, D is in it, F, J, my getting close and running out of space all right so that's m union h complement all right it is a case of writing down all that are in m and all that are in h complement if you can't readily see what is in h complement just write what is in h first then cross them out and know that those are not supposed to be there and then, after that, you write down what is in both key arm sets at the same time. Anyway, we'll continue with this discussion in another video. So, I will see you then.